International Cooperation Forum was successfully held in Beijing. The forum includes the opening ceremony, the leaders' roundtable, the high-level meeting, 12 thematic forums, and a CEO conferences. And 40 leaders attended <coughs> the roundtable, including heads of state and government from 38 countries, including China and Nepal, United Nations, Secretary General and the Managing Director of the International Monetary Fund. Over 6,000 foreign guests from 150 countries and the 92 international organizations participated in the forum. The participating parties held an in-depth exchange of views on the Belt and Road Corporation and widely saw the Belt and Road Initiative as a great opportunity. So this is the consensus of all the participants. They reached a broad consensus on high quality Belt and Road Corporation, uh, delivering substantial results. The consensus and outcomes are reflected in the joint community adopted unanimously at the leaders' roundtable and in the list of deliverables compiled and released by the Chinese side as the host country. And the list includes 283 concrete results in six categories. In general, six major outcome highlights can be summarized from the second BRI. The first set the goal of jointly promoting high quality belt and road cooperation as the direction of cooperation. That means the key word is the uh, high quality. So we prefer. And the second, promote a global partnership of connectivity to promote interconnected, interconnected development. So the second keyword is the global partnership of connectivity. The third, achieve substantial and practical outcomes to reflect mutual benefit and win-win results. That means sustain, sustain, substantial and practical. So this is the keywords. The fourth, the build new platforms for the match up of local governments and the industrial and commercial communities to broaden cooperation opportunities. That local governments are very important to participate in the Belt and Road Initiative. The fifth, improve the Belt and Road Cooperation architecture to build supporting mechanisms. So under the BRI frame, so we have uh, uh, built up many mechanisms for the dialogue. Uh, actually, every two years, this kind of international forum will be held. But during the two years, there are some working mechanisms. We'll also make a platform for the different countries to, make, to, conduct, to conduct each other for the development affairs. And the six give play to the leading role of head of state diplomacy to deepen bilateral relations. Because during these uh, conferences, uh, actually the President Xi Jinping uh, received many counterparts from the different countries. And they also have the bilateral engagement during the conference. And also I think the most, and one of the most important one is right on the road, uh, the President Madam Bandari. Uh, so such tangible outcomes, how that the Belt and the Road uh, cooperation has attracted more and more friends and partners and witnessed more and more in-depth cooperation. With the vision, mechanisms and the measures, the Belt and the Road cooperation will be stable and sustainable, widely supported by the participating parties with their wisdom and efforts. The BRF will continue to contribute more to the Belt and Road Corporation and to promoting our major uh, country, diploma, uh, dip, diplomacy with Chinese characteristics. So, uh, dear friends, so uh, on the BRI, I would like to explain other two points. So the uh, first one is the so-called debt trap. So many countries criticized that the Belt and Road Initiative uh, will uh, make some debt trapped. So some countries raised the questions whether the BRI adds to the debt 
of uh, some countries and creates that trap. But our answer is definitely no. Businesses as the main players in BRI cooperation, they will naturally act according to the law of the market so that they don't end up losing money. For most developing countries, they need funds and investments in order to achieve <coughs> development. China, as other international financial institutes, institutions do, offer help in the form of funds based are funds based on eco consultation and without any additional political condition. All parties involved are eco participants. They have all contributed to the BRI and benefited from it. So the BRI is open, inclusive, and transparent. So it does not harbor any hidden geopolitical agenda, nor is it designed to form an ex ex exclusive circle or impose discriminatory trade terms on others. So the debt problem of developing countries has much longer history, I think even before the initiative uh, was, uh, was mentioned by, was pointed out by the, uh, by the Chinese side. So it would be unfair to blame the BRI or China for their debt problem. As a matter of fact, no country has got trapped in debt crisis since its participation in the BRI. So I think for most of the developing countries, they need the funds of development. They don't need the trapped. So what the Chinese side uh, provide to these countries are the opportunity of development. So I think the second uh, one is that uh, some countries may be, may be regard the BRI as a non-reimbursable uh, non, uh, assistance. This is also a wrong opinion because uh, China should help them to develop projects in the form uh, of assistance, a kind of uh, non-reimbursable one uh, that is not uh, correctly at all. This isn't the truth of BRI. The BRI follows the sound principle of consultation and cooperation for mutual benefits and has become the largest platform for international cooperation, which uh, means that the participants involved consult together, work together, and enjoy the benefits together. As for specific cooperation, the BRI adheres to a government-led enterprise operated and market-based pattern. <coughs> so all projects have been examined uh, by a feasibility study and the market-based argumentation to ensure due economic and social benefits. China is not only the initiator, but also an equal collaborator in the project. So we are equally, we are, we are in the eco, e eco uh, status. So China also provides assistance for related cooperation within its capacity and, enc and encourages common support uh, from other sides. The Belt and the Road Cooperation has deposited the picture of the times featuring women cooperation between China and Nepal and the rest of the world. So we are willing to together with cooperative partners so the seeds and reap the fruits. We wish people of all countries a happier life and wish the world a better place and hope that various parties will jointly build a community with a shared future for mankind and everybody can take their due responsibility in this process. So all the friends, so I'd like to uh, brief some of the visit of her right honorable, uh, the pre uh, President <coughs> Madame Bandari's visit. So at the invitation of His Excellency Xi Jinping, the Right Honorable President uh, Mrs. Vidya Devi Pantari, so I was uh, also on that occasion, it was uh, welcomed by the international communities and uh, deep uh, uh, impressed by her Right Honorable speech. And which fully shows the Nepal's uh, support uh, the BRI and attaches great importance to China-Nepal relations. 
The present uh, Pantari's attendance makes great contribution to the success of the BRIF and the China-Nepal Trans-Himalayan Multidimensional Connectivity <coughs> Network, including China-Nepal Cross-Border Railway, has been written in the joint communique of the Leaders' Roundtable at the second BRIF. It's quite an important outcome. And besides attending the BRIF, the present Madam Bandari also paid a state visit to China. This is the first state visit to China by uh, Nipli President. During the visit, His Excellency the President Xi Jinping held a welcome ceremony for President <coughs> Bandari and held an in-depth talks. During the talks, President, uh, the two president, uh, the, the president Bandari reaffirmed that Nepal <coughs> sticks to the one China policy and will not allow any forces to use its territory to conduct any anti China activities. <coughs> president Bandari also invited President Xi Jinping to visit Nepal as an early date. And the President Xi Jinping expressed that he was very happy and <coughs> willing to visit Nepal at a convenient and suitable time for both sides. And President Bandari also visited uh, the Xi'an uh, in the Shanxi province and the Tibet autonomous region and has extensive talks with the leaders of local government of China. So the present Bangladesh state visit is very successful and uh, fruitful, which is the milestone of, uh, of China and the Nepal relations and has far-reaching uh, significance. And the many bilateral cooperation documents, uh, such as the protocol on implementing agreement on transit and the transport between China and Nepal, and also agreement on economic and technical cooperation, and also some other very important bilateral cooperation and OUs and uh, uh, cooperations was signed during that, uh, that occasion. And in the protocol on implementing agreement on transit and the transport between China and Nepal, China allows Nepal to use the open sea ports there will be four, and the dry ports, there will be three, to, uh, for <coughs> handling its traffic in transit. And under the agreement on economic and the technical cooperation, the government of China, the pride, the government of Nepal, a grant assistance in 2019 for the implementation of mutually agreed projects in the fields, especially in the livelihood improvement and the post-disaster reconstruction and infrastructure. So that is the uh, visits of the Right Honorable uh, President. Uh, actually, the China and the Nepal, we linked by mountains and rivers, have enjoyed ver everlasting friendship. The two peoples have close bonds and have gone through thick and thin together. The Chinese side highly values de the development of bilateral relations and supports the Nepali side's efforts in safeguarding national independence, sovereignty, and territorial integrity, and in, explo and in exploring a developing paths that suited to Nepal's own conditions. This is our consistent policy toward Nepal. And since China and Nepal signed the MOU on the BRI, the, the traditional friendly cooperation between China and Nepal has faced new historic opportunities, and we stand at the historical starting point. The leaders of the two countries have reached important consensus on jointly build the Trans-Himalayan Multidimensional Connectivity Network in the days coming, the two sides will work together to implement the consensus and the outcomes of all the visits. According to Nepal statistics, in the physical year of 2007 to 2008, the trade volume between the two countries was 1.76 uh, billion US dollars, <coughs> up 39.6% uh, on a yearly basis. China has become Nepal's biggest FDI country, the second largest trading partner. Currently, the projects of the two countries, such as nine-slot 
bus and Dubar tower re uh, restoration at Duba Square of Kathmandu, Kathmandu Duba High School, International Sports Center reconstruction, rehabilitation of rail, uh, runway uh, and taxiways of the Chiri, uh, Ch uh, Chipuan International Airport, uh, Bokra uh, Regional International Airport, and are under the smooth progress. Uh, upper uh, Chishuri 3A hydropower projects has injected uh, 30 megawatt into the Nipli national grid. Very, very Babe, diversion uh, multi purpose projects <coughs> and TBM tunnel uh, has got its breakthrough and the uh, Jammu Tatupani border port. Uh, temporarily closed due to the earthquake in 2015 will be reopened soon, maybe next week. So in my view, so our two countries <coughs> show further citizen <coughs> policy coordination and infrastructure connectivity steadily push forward the construction and research of infrastructure development such as roads, ports, railways, and airports and strengthen the cooperation in tourism, <coughs> finance, culture, and the people's livelihood. So as you know, the people-to-people -people, uh, and the cultural exchange between the two countries keep a strong momentum. China is Nepal's biggest source of foreign tourists. So in 2018, the number of Chinese tourists visiting Nepal exceeded 150,000. And in the fourth month of this year, the number reaches more 60,000. So we are willing to encourage more Chinese tourists to visit Nepal in order to cooperate with the plan of Visit Nepal to 2020. And at present, China has entered a new era by following the path of socialism with Chinese characteristics. And Nepal also has opened a new chapter of stable development. So China and Nepal should further intensify exchange of all the levels and strengthen win-win cooperation in all the fields under the framework of BRI. The Chinese side is willing to continue to support Nepal's <coughs> economic and the social development, and the two sides work together to combine the Chinese dream of realizing national rejuvenation with the development of a uh, goal of prosperous Nepal, happy Nepali, and at once China Nepal friendly cooperative relations to a new level and join hands to embark on a new journey to benefit two peoples of the two countries and build a community with shared future for China and Nepal. And uh, I think all the Nepali friends are very important for the social media and you are the contributor to the development of the country. So I wish Nepali media friends as the main promulgator of information can focus on them and do the objective report in order to make more contribution to the further development of traditional friendly China-Nepal relations. So dear friends, so I've also uh, kind of information that shared with everybody that maybe you have already noticed that a very imp uh, another uh, international uh, multilateral conference also was held in the 15th of uh, May uh, that called the uh, in Asian culture. Yeah, culture. Uh, on the dialogue of uh, Asian civilization summarized in CDAC, which opened on Beijing in Beijing on May 15th. So this is another yeah. Uh, this is the, another major international event that hosted by China this year, following the second Belt and Road Forum for International Cooperation in April, and uh, the International Horticultural Exhibition, which lasts from April to October. And uh, more than 2,000 people from 47 uh, Asian countries, as well as from other parts of the world, including our Nipali friends, attended the opening ceremony and forums. The forum explored themes such as sharing 
uh, governance experience, safeguarding the diversity of Asian civilizations, civilizations and building a community with a shared future for, hum uh, for humanity. So actually during the opening ceremony of the uh, CDAC, the President Xi Jinping gave a keynote speech. He rejected the theory that the different civilizations are bound to clash. He said that various civilizations are not destined to clash. And he said it is foolish to believe that one's race and civilization are superior to others. And it is disastrous to willfully uh, reshape or even replace other civilizations. So uh, President Xi uh, made a four-point <coughs> proposal to consolidate the cultural foundation of jointly building a community with a shared future for Asia and humanity. The first is treating each other with respect and as equal. The second, appreciating the beauty of all civilizations. The third, adhering to openness, inclusiveness, <coughs> and mutual learning. And the fourth is to keeping pace with the times. So that is the main theme of the CDCA. That is another quite important international conference that initiated by China and held in China. So we respect this kind of uh, interaction between different civilizations. So we should respect each other and to be treated each other uh, as an equally basis. And. Uh, and dear friends, so during our preparation of the uh, this morning's briefing, so some friends uh, from the media uh, show their interest on the trade fiction between China and the U.S. recently. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to cast some light on the issue because I am not the person that responsible for this issue. I think the headquarters of the two countries had the wisdom to dealing with this uh, very uh, complicated situation. So, but for a diplomat and because we are the friends, so I'd like to brief something uh, in my opinion. So, based on the uh, China-U.S. trade deficit, uh, the U.S. side has repeatedly imposed tariffs on Chinese goods uh, since March 2008. From then on, the two sides have held 11 rounds of trade talks to find the solution, during which the Chinese side has shown sufficient sincerity and constructive attitude. The spokespersons of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and also the Ministry uh, of Commerce of China have explained and showed Chinese stance on this. So we welcome Nipple Media Friends to browse the website of Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Ministry of Commerce of China. So every details and our positions are over there. Uh, so we welcome you to, 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 to read and browse that website. And the economic and the social development of countries <coughs> in the world is increasingly interconnected. So the reform of the global governance system and the international order is picking up speed. History and the reality have shown that as two major countries, the U.S. is the biggest economy, now China is the second one. So China and the U.S. will both benefit from cooperation and lose from conflicts. So we, be, we believe that raising tariffs won't solve any problem, and starting a trade war will harm not only each other, but also oneself. Cooperation is only right choice for the two countries. Dialogue is the only way out. The two <coughs> sides should follow the direction set by the two heads of state, manage their differences on the basis of mutual respect, expand cooperation on the basis of mutual benefit, and work together in pushing forward China-U.S. relations based on coordination, cooperation, and so we do think that the China-U.S. relations are quite important. 
not only important for both countries' people, but also for the international communities. Mm. Because right now the world is interconnectivity. No single country can live well without any others. So China will firmly stick to its own pace and steadily advance reform and opening up. In addition, we will work with the majority of countries to stay committed to the multilateral trading system, promoting economic globalization and trade investment facilitations to jointly build a community of shared future for mankind. China will further enhance mutually beneficial economic cooperation with our neighboring friends, including Nepal, in order to promote the economic and <coughs> social development in the region and also in the world. So that all I'd like to brief to our friends.